For those viewers who have been around this channel for a while, Sam Hell should pretty much be a household name at this point. An anonymous, mysterious filmmaker who reigns in the underground horror world. Flesh Eater X. Let's stop at the morgue. And of course, the infamous love dump. Well, today's a special day where we get to add another one of his films to the coveted title of most disturbing films ever made. Maybe his most extreme film to date. Well, I'm Nightmare Movies, and today we're gonna discuss the most intense documentary you've never seen. I cut your flesh. Before we get into the dissection, I want to set the tone. Most of this film contains nudity, real blood, and other very graphic content, so footage from the film will be limited. And on a personal note, I had a very hard time sitting through this movie. This is your last warning. I'm going to cover subjects on blood play, needle play, and more. If you're sensitive to blood or anything else previously mentioned, this film may not be for you. This is Socks, the subject of this documentary. You may be curious why she's called Socks. Well, because I have awesome socks. Socks is going to be our tour guide into the world of blood play. For those like me who are not familiar with the term, blood play is described as a sexual interest where the sight, scent, feel, and or taste of blood is sexually arousing, says Sarah Mellencon, PhD, a sociologist, clinical sexologist, and resident expert at the Sex Toy Collective. With all this buildup, I'll just say this, the film itself is relatively straightforward. We follow socks through multiple, I guess I'll call them sessions, that get progressively more extreme. The first session follows Socks in what looks to be a tattoo parlor with two other people who are unnamed, a man and a woman. She strips down and so begins the session. The man uses a purple marker to make dots on her back and we'll see why later. Once the markings are made, Socks's hands are bound behind her with a rope by the woman. Once bound, the woman starts to whip her. After a few minutes of whipping, the man approaches from behind her with a much larger whip. With each crack of the whip, Sox's back only gets more red and irritated and even starts to bleed. The two then flip Sox around on the chair, and once they do, the man pushes syringe tips through her pinched skin all along her torso. The ends of the needles left sticking out of her, Sox winces as each needle is pushed through, but at the end of it all, cracks a smile. This is a bit of a side note, but Sox is a very likable and informative person for this documentary, which almost makes it harder to sit through, but... Anyways, back to the film. After all the syringe tips are inserted, the man starts to put pressure on her chest, causing Socks to yell. Once that's over, they begin to remove all the needles, and once they do, the two slap the freshly opened wounds. With gloves, of course. For the next phase, Socks is lying down on a padded table, her body already exhausted, shaking, and bruised. But now, we get to find out why those marks were made on her back earlier. The man and the woman begin to pierce through her back with large gauge needles, socks gritting her teeth with each needle being pushed through. The process is slow, and Sam's tight camera work only accentuates the pain socks must be feeling. With each pierce through her back, they attach a large metal ring through the hole. After about eight of these rings are now deeply inserted in socks's back, they thread a piece of black ribbon through her rings, creating a pattern like the back of a corset. Bleeding all down her back, the last stage is initiated. Socks is perched up on a chair once again and spanked repeatedly with a large black leather paddle. There's severe redness and trauma almost immediately to the area. We soon discover why. We learn the paddle was embroidered with sharp, tack-like pieces of metal, with each strike being like sitting on shattered glass. Once the rings are removed and the beating done, they spray all over her wounds with what I assume is alcohol. And finally, the end of the session for Socks has arrived. But we're just getting started.
One of the later and more notable sessions that Sox has is in what is referred to as a dungeon. Pardon me sounding a little vanilla, but this is a whole new world for me. The room is decorated red, with jars filled with God only knows what. Sox sits down on a couch wrapped in a plastic blanket as we wait for the activities to begin. A long-haired, shirtless man approaches Sox to start. He digs through a toolbox of sterilized metal and the session starts with needles being inserted slowly into Sox's inner thighs. The shots are extremely close so there's no looking away as we see the needles pushing against her skin before they finally break through. More needles are inserted under the skin on both sides of her ribs and her chest. Throughout the whole process, Sox is obviously vocalizing the pain, making these long, uninterrupted shots more unbearable. But just when you think it can't get any worse, I promise you it does. The next part of this process begins with the man standing behind Sox. She has her hair up in a ponytail, and just from the top of the frame, we see a glove reach down from behind her. It grabs a large portion of Sox's skin on her forehead and rams a thick needle through it. She winces and hollers as the man inserts four more needles into her forehead, creating a crown. Her face is tired as the endorphins are now leaving her system and she's left just sitting there. Once she has a moment to catch her breath, the man begins to remove each one of the needles from her torso and I let out a sigh of relief. Until I saw what he pulled out next. The man pulls out a cupping device used to suction small areas of someone's body. After removing the needles on her ribs, he places the cups over the open wounds and starts to suck out the blood. As the blood leaks from her ribs, the rest of the needles on her from her thighs to her head are removed and we see why the couch was covered. Once the cups are finally removed and leaving giant circular welts on her body, Sox has just sat there bleeding from head to toe, with nothing but a smile across her face. Before we begin the last session, I'm going to say that I'm not covering all of the scenes in this documentary. There is still much more to see if you wish to. But for now, this is the final session I will cover, and it takes place in a park. Sox is seen in a tent with a number of other people preparing her for something I most certainly was not prepared for. They begin by applying betadine, a sort of sterilizer, to her back and her knees. Once the areas are sanitized, four metal clasps and thick needles are revealed. Just above her kneecaps, one of the men pinches large sections of Sox's skin and shoves maybe the thickest needles I've ever seen through them. Once through the muscle tissue of her back and her legs, four clasps are attached to her and a rope is run through them. Slowly, we see the ropes tied around a branch and Sox's skin is stretched to a level that made me a little lightheaded, honestly. They slowly raise her higher and higher, ensuring that the bars won't break through her skin and muscle, hoist it up into the air, only held up by her leg and back muscles, and start swinging in the park. And that is the end of session three. This is probably one of the most difficult movies I've personally ever sat through. The uncomfortably close cinematography Sam uses to show us these piercings in full HD makes my legs just weak. Now, like I said earlier, there are plenty more scenes to this film and they are all just as graphic, if not even more. If learning about this world interests you, I highly recommend checking out this documentary and I also recommend purchasing a Blu-ray while you still can from abaroquehouse.com. If not, I believe it's still available to rent on Vimeo. Now something I want to try doing for this channel is giving back to the community. So I reached out to Sam Hell and he gave me a few links to some Indiegogos that he recommends I support. Without those kind of films, without films like Sam's, there would be no Nightmare Movies most likely. So with all that being said, I'm Nightmare Movies, and I'll see you guys next time.